This is one of those guns that's slowly fading away into the history books, and it's unfortunate because it is a very good gun. If you've heard of the Galil, there's a good chance it's because you played Counter-Strike, where it's known as the poor man's AK. In the late 1960s, the Israel Defense Force, or IDF, desperately needed to replace their aging foul rifles. Although accurate and powerful, the FAL proved unreliable in dusty conditions and was considered way too bulky. After capturing thousands of AK-47s during the Six Day War, the IDF wanted a rifle that would offer the reliability of an AK and the accuracy of the FAL. Designs were submitted including the HK-33, Stoner 63, and even a design from the inventor of the Uzi. Eventually, they chose Yezreel Galili's design based heavily on the AK, which would become the Galil. It was chambered in 556 by 45 because at the time, US was the biggest ammunition supplier, but there were 762 variants as well. The Galil was very well received and became the official service rifle for nearly 30 years. It still has a decent following today with a modernized version known as the Galil Ace, but it's still one of those guns that's sadly being forgotten. This is the SEMA Galil SAR or the CM043B. The SAR stands for Short Assault Rifle. It ditches that trademark Galil carry handle and the bipod, but it's also shorter and more practical. SEMA's AK-104 or the CM040B is about the same length as the Galil and it also features a folding stock, so we're going to use it for comparison's sake today. I'm going to start off by saying internally it's more or less a standard SEMA AK, more similar to the newer VFC style bodies rather than the older TM style ones. As such, this review is going to be less about the internals and rather what sets the Galil apart from an AK. We begin with perhaps the most important question. Does the Galil take AK mags? And the short answer is sort of. See, when I first popped in the mag, I was like, okay, cool, it fits AK mags, sweet. Until I took a closer look. See, there are slight dimensional differences between the two mags that might cause some fitment issues. First and foremost, the front lip on the Galil mag is quite a bit narrower than a standard AKs. If you look into the mag well, you'll see a small channel it's supposed to fit into. When you put in a standard AK mag, it's merely held in there by friction, and if you pull it hard enough, it will slip out. Luckily, with a file and some patience, you can easily modify either the mag or the mag well to fit. But then there's the other issue. The rear lip on a standard AK mag is a little bit higher than a Galil mag, meaning the AK mag itself will ride a little lower, causing some feeding issues. When I tested the AK mag for feeding, it would misfeed unless I was applying constant upwards pressure. Again, it's possible to fix, but after you do all that work, you gotta wonder if it was a better call just trying to find some Galil mags. It's also worth noting that Galil mags will not fit in an AK. Even though the front lip fits, the body itself is a little bit too wide. Taking a look at the Galil mag itself, it's a 430 round high cap made of steel. It's got IWI trades, which is a nice touch. It's a tight fit in the mag well, and the mag catch sometimes needs a bit of help to fully engage, but it will work in over time. I prefer my mags tight anyways, and the play is one of the best we've seen from SEMA. Very little side to side and almost no front to back. I had no feeding issues with the stock mag. Moving on to overall fit and finish, it feels as good as any other SEMA we've seen. It's not perfect and there is a bit of play in the receiver cover as well as the handguard, but it is solid where it counts like the barrel to the receiver. Holding it in the hands, it more or less does feel like an AK with the weight distribution spread out throughout the gun, coming in at 3.2 kilograms or 7 pounds. The real Galil SAR comes in at 3.75 kilograms or 8.2 pounds. Most M4s on the market will weigh roughly 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds, so if you're used to an M4, expect a little bit more from the Galil. The AK-104 is a little bit lighter, coming in at 2.9 kilograms, so I expected a healthy amount of steel in the Galil. Unfortunately, parts like the lower receiver, the stock, and the barrel are aluminum. There are still many steel components like the receiver cover, the stock bracket, the gas block, and a lot of the hardware. 
Of course, it would have been nice to have a little bit more steel, but again, in the hands, it's pretty hard to tell. Looking at the receiver, you'll notice the shape is actually quite different than an AK. It's less boxy and the magwell has a steeper angle, which is all faithful to the real Galil. There are a few IWI trademarks, which is great for collectors. The top cover is smoother and there is a rear sight at the back, but more on that in a moment. You'll notice the sling mount is on the left side of the gun and it doesn't rotate, both of which I prefer. It makes a bit less noise and it's more secure. You'll find the same mount at the front as well. The stock is surprisingly quite comfortable, but there is only one fixed length and it's slightly longer than the AKs. It's put together well with minimal movement and the spring tension is strong. You push down and flip the stock to the right. It's held in place by spring tension, much like the MP5K PDW. Curiously, with the stock folded, you can clearly see that it blocks the travel of the charging handle. Now, I took a look at some pictures of the real Galil, and the stock angle is slightly different, meaning, yes, you can still fire with that stock folded. It's a good thing this is an AEG then. Speaking of the charging handle, the Galil charging handle curves upwards and has a knurled handle at the top. This is designed to allow for racking over the top of the receiver. This also means that in a pinch, you could rest the Galil onto its right side, onto that charging handle. But for many AK guys, this is still considered a sin. The grip has the same angle as the AK, but the profile is less tapered and overall just seems to fit my hand a little better. You'll notice the secondary selector switch, which is true to the real Galil, but is sadly fake on this gun. The mag release is standard AK style, but there is an extended plate which you can use your trigger finger to activate. There's a metal piece covering the release, which I presume is to prevent accidental mag drops, but this means no cool boy AK reloads with another mag. The polymer handguard is quite a bit larger than the AKs, but it's still quite comfortable. Every time I look at it from the top, I feel like something's missing, but this is true to the Galil. Overall, the front barrel group looks decidedly AK inspired, but look a little closer and pretty much everything is slightly different. At the end of the barrel, you'll find an M4 style steel flash hider and a 14mm counterclockwise thread. Finally, we have the sights, which are personally my favorite part of the Galil. Pretty standard sights with two apertures and a front sight post, right? Wrong! Wham bam, we got white dot sights, baby! The rear apertures have a third slot in the middle so they can fold out of the way. I think it's pretty unique and pretty useful as well, especially that it dates back from the 70s. On the topic of sights though, there are no rails whatsoever, not even the side AK mount. So I hope you like iron sights. On to the shooting test, the gun chronos in at just over 370 feet per second with a very good consistency. This kind of deviation is exactly what you want with a total spread of about 3 FPS. Rate of fire is pretty average, clocking in at 11.8 rounds per second with a 7.4 volt 1000 milliamp hour LiPo. I wouldn't recommend running an 11.1 in this gun without a MOSFET. Shooting a couple shots at the target, my first impressions are really good. The sights need a little bit of zeroing, but the gun is super consistent. Definitely no complaints in the accuracy department, and I'm sure it'll be even better with some upgrades. So who is this gun for? Is it a good first gun? Sadly, with the mags being pretty hard to find, and the overall lack of any rails, along with that relatively hefty weight, it wouldn't be my first recommendation. However, if those aren't deal breakers for you, this is quite a well-rounded gun. The length means it's perfectly capable of being an indoor and an outdoor gun, and that solid folding stock makes it a great milsim gun as well. For me though, I'd slot this in as a collector's piece, and for that, it is excellent. The details are really spot on, and it's a rare enough gun that most of your buddies might not even know what it is, and let's be honest, that's half the fun. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for regular updates, and we'll catch you on the next one.